Hey everybody, this is Mike from the One Stop Co-op Shop, and we're finally getting to a game that uh, has been talked about and covered just about everywhere. Uh, it's our turn now, Wingspan from Stonemeyer Games. Specifically, this will be a playthrough of the solo mode and including the European expansion. No disclaimer needed for the core game, we own this, but we did get a reviewer discount on the European expansion. It wasn't free, but pretty cheap. And just in case this is your first exposure to Wingspan, I'll walk through setup and the basics of play, but feel free to skip all of that right to the playthrough using the timestamps in the video info or in the little timeline for the video. And hey, if you like what you see on One Stop Co-op Shop, also check out our weekly podcast. Join the discussion on our Slack or Discord channel. And if you'd like to support the work we do here, consider contributing something on Patreon. So let's walk through setup. It's pretty straightforward. Again, this is for the solo variant, and I am including the European expansion. I'll walk through the player setup first and then get to the Altama. You're going to take eight action cubes in your chosen color and put them by your board. Take one of each of the five varieties of food tokens. Draw two random bonus cards. So here we got Breeding Manager and Ethologist. And finally, draw five bird cards. Now, technically, part of setup is choosing which birds you want to keep. And for each card you keep, you have to discard one of your starting food tokens. And you also pick just one bonus card to retain. But that's really going to be the beginning of our strategy. So I'll leave the player setup there for now and get to the other stuff. You're going to put three bird cards face up in the offer here. You're going to randomize all these end of round tokens, front and back, shuffle them up. And you're going to put four out, one on each of these round squares. You're also going to roll the five dice into the bird feeder to randomize your initial food offer. And that's it except for the Automa. You're going to take eight action cubes for them. I like to use blue because that's what's pictured on their cards. You're going to randomize a bonus card or with the European expansion, you can use one of these two, which I like better because they're less swingy than the ones in the original game, which could sometimes give the Automa nothing or way too much. This is one I like, uh, birds that are worth five, six, or seven points. The Altama is going to be going after when they can. You also take the end of round cards indicating round one. You've got the one from the base game and the new one from the European expansion. Now I just like to put those near the tokens to refer to. Finally, you're going to shuffle up all of the Automa cards and you're ready to play. So to quickly run through the basics of play of Wingspan, the game is played over the course of four rounds. And each player, or in solo, the player in the Automa will take eight actions a turn. But at the end of each round, you'll lose one of your action cubes. So in round two, you'll take only seven actions. In round three, six actions. In round four, five actions. And you'll be placing these action cubes on one of the four spots up here. You can either play a bird card from your hand, which will require some food tokens and sometimes eggs based on what column they're played in. And birds will tell you which habitat or sometimes habitats they can be played in. You place them in the leftmost open space for the indicated habitat of your choice when there's more than one. Now, again, to play those birds, you need food except for the starting food. So this action lets you gain dice from the bird feeder. And the basic idea here is you pick the die of your choice. If you pick this one, you can do a worm or a grain. You remove the die from the bird feeder and you take the corresponding food token into your supply. A key concept is if there are ever no dice in the bird feeder, they are all immediately re-rolled. But additionally, if every die in the bird feeder shows the same face, any time that a player would gain food, even in the middle of resolving an action, they can choose to re-roll all five of the dice, their choice. And as you fill up the different rows with birds, you'll increase the benefits. So at first you're only getting one die worth of food, but with one bird there, you now get one die and can discard an extra bird card from your hand to get a second die of food. Now two dice of food, two dice in the option for a third, you get the idea. And all the rows work like that, where they increase the amount you get each time you take the action. Second action is to lay the indicated number of eggs on bird cards. And as I already mentioned, to play birds in the later rows, not counting the first bird you play in each habitat, will cost one or sometimes two eggs, as indicated above. And each bird card can hold as many eggs as indicated by these icons here. And they also have a nest type, which will often interact with uh, end of round tokens and bonus cards. And by the way, eggs are worth one victory point each at the end of the game, so it's never a bad idea to earn them. So you need food and sometimes eggs to play birds, but how do you get more birds in your hand? That's where the final action comes in. You start up by getting one bird, 
And that bird can always either come from the offer, face up three cards, or you can randomly take the top card of the deck. And at the end of any player turn, if the offer is not full, you'll draw new cards to place into any empty spots. And I forgot to mention, to get extra eggs on some of the action spaces, you discard any food of one type. And to draw extra bird cards, you discard any eggs. You see they kind of go above to the uh, next habitat. Uh, one final note on the basic actions. You can see it indicated up here. Any two food tokens can be treated as any other food token. So if I needed a fish but only had a mouse and a berry, I could discard both of these to count them as a fish. Now, another thing is you'll see that all of these three main action spaces but not playing a bird indicate that you resolve brown powers from right to left. And how they suggest you do it to remind yourself of this is you place it on the first open space so I get my food. And then I go card by card, and each one that has a brown power, I can choose to resolve, I don't have to, and then finally it ends up here. So here, for example, this bird would let me gain grain from the supply onto him, and any uh, food that gets placed on birds through uh, powers is worth one victory point at the end of the game. You also have birds that will sometimes eat other birds from the deck or from your hand, uh, cash those birds, and that's also worth one point. You also have white powers that are activated when you first play the bird and then never again. You have pink powers that happen on other players' turns, although they work a little differently with the Automa. And new to the European expansion, you have these round end powers that will happen at the end of each of the four rounds. And speaking of the four rounds, at the end of each round, you'll check the round end goal. And here it'll say, for example, you're looking which player has the most birds that are worth four or more victory points, the little feather icon. So the Atlantic Puffin in my starting hand would be worth eight, but our Griffin Vulture would only be worth one, wouldn't fit the bill. Whichever player has the most would put their action token, remember you're losing one at the end of each round, this is how you lose it, on uh, the first space, second player would put their token on the second space, and you're getting uh, fewer and fewer victory points as you go down. In the case of a tie, you can just kind of put them in between, and you both get a total of the two spots added up, rounded down. And that kind of segues nicely into the Automa's turn. What do they do? So you always go first in a round. After you go, you flip up one of their cards, and you'll resolve the effect for the round you're currently in. If it's one or more eggs, you just give them that many eggs. It's a straight-up victory point for them. If it's a food die, you look for the first icon that is present in the bird feeder, and you take all the dice that match that out of the bird feeder. This also, you'll notice, is how you activate your pink powers, the interactive ones. If it has a face down burn symbol, you get rid of all the birds in the offer, and then you just give the AI a face down bird. Based on the difficulty you choose to play out, these will be worth three, four, or five victory points. But if it's a bird symbol like this one, you refer to the AI's current bonus card. So like here, they're looking for birds that are five, six, or seven points. You grab every bird in the offer that applies. Right now, there's only the chestnut collared longspur. And the AI gains face up, so worth the actual value of the card, the highest value out of the ones they drew. Any extra ones are discarded. Now, if none of them match the AI's bonus card, they again just get a face down card for three, four, or five victory points. Finally, many cards will have a little blue icon or an next out blue icon. When they have an icon, you place the token next to the current round to show the AI is basically getting another point towards winning the competitive goal. When they X out the token, if there's one there, you just remove it. And when you're at the end of the round and seeing who won the goal, you first check the AI card, see which goal you have. Here we have birds worth four or more points. And you'll see the AI starts with a base value of negative one. So they actually have to get tokens in this case to have a chance of competing with us. But if it was instead a card that said uh, total birds, they would count as having played at two in this round. They add the number of tokens they have to that base value. So remember for this one worth uh, four or more points, they had a negative one. So here would be like they had two birds like that. And then you compare that to your values and see if you tied or got first place or got last. If you or the AI has a zero, so like you played no birds of that place, you can't get second place. You just get zero victory points. And again, at the end of each round, you'll resolve those. You'll get rid of all these cards and redraw them. And you also flip all the AI reference cards to their round two for new base values. Plus there's one card for each round in the AI deck. You just remove that indicated card. All right, there we go. A bunch of detail on how to play, but let's see it in action. Uh, let's get to my hand and my bonus cards, see what I want to pick based on the end of round goals. So first things first, we're going to see that birds worth four or more victory points are good. Uh, birds with this kind of nest type, birds that go in the field habitat. And finally, birds with tucked cards, so birds who eat other birds or have some other action that lets them do that kind of thing. Now, there are often big birds who also can tuck cards, so that might be kind of a combo that goes together. But don't forget, we're only looking at round one right now. Those are kind of uh, further down things to think on. Now, there is a pretty great bird in the offer. He goes in the field. That's the round three gold. He has this kind of nest. That's the round two goal. He's worth four or more points, the round one goal. 
He doesn't tuck cards for the round four goal, but he does get us two bonus cards, extra ones, and keep an extra one, which I find is often a great way to get some uh, easy points. So definitely think about getting him early. So let's look next to the two bonus cards we drew, try to figure out some kind of strategy. And we've got birds that have at least four eggs laid on them. We get one victory point per bird. That's breeding manager. And eggs are just victory points on their own. So that's a pretty nice goal because as long as I get birds that have enough eggs, that's fine. Looking through my starting cards, I have two birds that could hold uh, four or more eggs. Although they don't necessarily match much else that I'm going for. Alternatively, in any one habitat, two victory points per power color. So brown, white, pink, and uh, teal, the new ones from the European expansion. Now, four of my five starting cards are white, interesting. <laughs> But uh, brown tends to be the most common. There's a teal and a pink in the offer right now. Yeah, hmm. I think again, I like the idea of being rewarded for doing something I want to do anyway. So I think I'm going to ditch uh, Ethologist and do Breeding Manager. Now one of the birds I want to pick. First of all, a really interesting one, Benelli's Eagle. It's worth eight victory points, which is huge and also fits the round one goal. Only one egg, not the right nest type. That's not too good. But look, he costs three rats or mice rodents, which is usually terrible. But when played, for each rodent in this bird's cost, you may pay one bird card from your hand. Instead, if you do, tuck the paid card behind this card. So I could, uh, like, get two extra birds and then keep a rodent, or even three, and then tuck them all behind this guy for extra victory points and not have to pay the food cost for him, which would hit me with the uh, round one and the round four gold for tucked cards. So I'm liking him a lot. Let's keep him. And he can go to any habitat. That's always nice. Atlantic Puffin is also worth a lot, but he also has a terrible egg value. Three fish is hard to come by. I do like the two new bonus card, but I like this guy sitting over there better. Let's assume he's going to be food or discarded. The long-tailed tit, when played, put this bird sideways so it covers two far spaces and pay the lower egg cost. This is a cool one I've never drawn before. Now, having two far spaces covered right away is negative in that I won't be able to play as many birds there, theoretically. But super positive in that I'm doubling my food production immediately by taking that guy. Yeah, I think he's cool. I definitely want to try him. And hey, it doesn't hurt that he's got four eggs for my bonus and a star nest type for round two. Love it. Interesting. Montague's Harrier. When played, instead of paying any cost, you may play this bird on top of another bird on your player mat. Discard any eggs and food from that bird. It becomes a tucked card. And if you can eat the long-tailed tit, that might be okay, because he's worth zero victory points, but I don't have anybody in the field right now. He does have the right nest type, and he would get me the uh, tucked thing as well, and he's worth four more victory points. Now, oh, he's a considerer one. And finally, the coal tit. Uh, gain one grain from the supply when activated. Cash it on this card, so that's worth the victory points. And when any time you spend grain cash on this card, that's a nice power. And he's got a ton of eggs he can hold. But we got too much competition anyway. I don't think I can keep him. All right, so I really like this guy that'll get me two food right away. So let's say I want to uh, get him played first. So if I'm keeping two food, I can only keep three of these guys. So let's say Benelli's Eagle, and then maybe the Montague one. Yeah, I mean, sure, he fits a lot of gold, and I'm sure I can get some cheap card he can cover. All right, so I'll discard these two guys. That'll let me keep the two food I wanted. And with the preliminaries out of the way, let's jump into play. All right, so I take the first action. I'm gonna play my uh, little food helper here. He's going in the leftmost space of the forest, which costs zero eggs, but I do need to spend all the food I have. Remember his special power, he is filling two forest spaces. We have our food bonus pretty quickly. And that is it for me. And I might want to grab this uh, chestnut collared long spur if the AI gives me a chance. Although this is the only five, six, or seven bird in the offer right now. So if the AI draws one of those cards, he'll definitely grab him. But in this case, he would have removed a token. He didn't have one and he gets one egg, just one victory point, nothing too threatening there. All right, back to me. I can gain food pretty quickly, but there's currently no mice and rodents in the offer to help me get either of my birds. But these kind of foods are there and I want to get this guy before the AI does. So let's go ahead and draw bird cards and uh, grab this guy for me. That's the only effect I get. We're replacing the author with an American coot. Oh, and he has a tuck power, so could consider him, although probably not. AI is gaining a token, so now they're at zero, which means uh, I will beat them if I play even one bird worth uh, four more points. And there are no rodents. So they're going to take, there's two fish dice in the bird feeder. Remember, they take all the ones of the leftmost icon that's present. So we put a little token here to mark that. And they remove both the fish, but they gain no other benefit from uh, doing so. All right, I do have a bird I actually want to play now who wants uh, worms and grain. So let's do a gain food action. I'm going to get two food and then no brown powers to resolve. And I want both of these guys. Let's see, I need two grain and a worm. And let's do one of each right now and need another uh, grain. And there's only a single icon type left in the feeder, which means that uh, next time either we get food or the AI gets food, they will reshuffle all the dice. Well, we can choose to. They would have to. 
All right, the Otama again. Oh, another token. They count as actually having played one four plus cost bird, and they're getting a face down bird. But don't forget that will clear the entire offer. Oh, I didn't say we're playing on a normal difficulty, so each of these is going to be worth four victory points. So I guess they've got five right now. And let's see. The common loon is worth six victory points, so that's two more than they would get with a normal bird draw. So I might want to take a bird uh, draw action to get that out of there. But first, uh, let's try our luck with food again. Two more dice. And I don't want berries. Only one type is in the feeder, so I can reroll them all. Nice. We'll definitely get a rodent and the grain we needed for that one bird. Back to the AI. Another token, yikes, and just an egg though, that's not too bad. Okay, so they now count as having played at two birds with four plus cost, which I'm gonna struggle to do on myself. Although they might lose a token, so let's at least get one bird down and uh, try to tie them at least. And so speaking of, we've got uh, everything we need for the chestnut colored long spur. We'll go ahead and put it there. He's going in out of the fields here. And he's another white power. I'm gonna draw two new bonus cards and keep one. Nice to have it early so I know uh, what I'm going for additionally. So we got a large bird specialist, birds with wingspans over 65 centimeters. Neither of the ones I've played so far has that. But both of the birds I'm hoping to play do, and if I can just get at least two more, then I could get some victory points. Or birds that eat only worms. Only worms? Yikes. I don't have anybody who does that, and there's nobody in the offer. So they all go for the large bird specialist and hope to play some more uh, big ones later. All right, back to the AI. He's going to take out food again, and pink powers activate. We don't have any. And he's preferring. There's none of the combo, so he's going to take out the one worm die. So the bird feeder is full of a bunch of stuff I don't care about. All right, so I've got three actions left. Is there any way to play either of these guys? I certainly don't want to have the Montague's Harrier eat my long spur. But if I can get one more red, I can play him straight up, although I would need to get an egg. So it's at least one action to get the egg, one action to get the rat, one action to play him. And that would be uh, everything to get him out. Alternatively, for Benelli's Eagle, I've only again got one rat. And if I can draw two birds, he can eat them, and then I can use his power to also tuck them under. And then I can put him on water so I wouldn't need the eggs yet. So yeah, that'd be a draw action, another draw action, and then play him and eat a bunch. Yeah, I think I might be leaning toward that. So we're going to draw one bird card. Let's go for this common loon. I could actually play this. It's worth uh, four plus victory points. It has a big wingspan for my bonus. But I think I might have the eagle eat him. Or maybe leave the Montague's Harrier, because the common loon actually has a brown power. The Harrier has basically a wasted power. New card in the offer is Cassin's Sparrow. Ooh, lay one egg on any bird. That's a nice power. Can the AI, just another egg. Love that. So we'll draw bird cards again. Let's see, the Sparrow's got the right nest type. None of them can hold four eggs. The Woodpecker has a big enough wingspan. But I'll probably be eating them, so let's just draw from the top. Red-headed Woodpecker. Okay, not a big enough wingspan, not enough eggs, not the right nest type. Now oh, he can get me grain, kind of like that other bird, but now I think I'll definitely be eating him. All right, AI's second to last card. He gets a bird of his type. This worked out pretty well because there are currently no birds worth five, six, or seven. So he just gets a face down bird and he leaves all of them alone. So I denied him a little bit of points there. All right, for a final action, let's get our water bird out. It's our eagle. Costs three rats, we're gonna pay one. I, mean, I do think I like the loon more than the harrier, so uh, he's going to eat both of these guys for the other two rats. And there we go. And the Atama's last action to close out the round. I would love if he got rid of one of his cubes. <laughs> hey, asking you shall receive. Get rid of that. Uh, but he does get a face down bird card. It also means the offer will go away. And I'm actually not going to refill it because uh, at the end of each round, you refill the offer anyway. So no point in discarding six cards instead of three. So the round is over. If I had any of the teal powers that give end of round bonuses, I would use them now. Let me score the end of round goal. Remember the Automa's base value is negative one, so he counts as having achieved one bird. That will be enough to get him second place instead of a zero. But with me having both the Long Spur and Benelli's Eagle, I'm gonna win with two. All right, any extra action cubes get removed for the AI. And similarly, I get mine back. And again, we discard and replace all bird cards, but I kind of delayed that. We've got Clark's Grebe. Oh, I like uh, the Egg Wild. Big wig span. Not enough eggs, though. Oh, no, that's right. 65, so that's not big enough. I have a Common Nighthawk and Eurasian Sparrowhawk. Not uh, loving any of those, but they're okay. And we remove the card that says remove after round one from the Automa deck before we reshuffle. And look at it next round. A bird with that type of nest with at least one egg. Okay, Automa's starting with a value of one. We'll not be able to beat that. Yeah, we got both a wild and uh, that exact nest type. So if I can get eggs on both of them, we're already a one ahead, not counting any tokens they might earn. 
And our loon that we'd like to play also has that. Now looking briefly at the offer, there is a five, six, or seven point bird, but five is only one point higher than the A I would get anyway, so not too worried about grabbing that. So let's go for food first to feed the loon, although since it's in the one egg column for water, we'll have to get some eggs in a second too. He wants a fish and anything. Hey, we can do that, let's get a fish. And before we get our second food, since there's only one type in the offer, we can reroll. Unfortunately, I don't really know what I need because uh, none of the birds in the offer are exciting me. I guess uh, rodents tend to be for the bigger birds and ones that want to tuck things for that goal, so I guess we'll go with that. Although, again, I'm probably about to eat it as a wild for the loon anyway. Okay, the AI is going to get a four-point face-down card, clear the offer, which I don't mind, but he will get a token, which means uh, he's tied with me if I get my eggs. All right, let's see what we got. Nobody's got the right nest type. Nobody has a big enough wingspan. Only one of them can hold four eggs. I guess he does have the nest, right nest type, actually. I do like this ability, though, even though I only get to use it three times. Choose a habitat with no eggs and lay one on each bird in that habitat. And note that round end abilities happen before you calculate the goal, so I could, like, get my last eggs with his power. But man, three food for zero victory points? That seems pretty rough. Yeah, so again, not too excited from them. I might just draw blind. But before we do that, let's go ahead and get some eggs. I'm not going to give up the food. I'll just get two. And I'm going to discard one of them in a second, so it doesn't matter much, but I'll put one on both of these guys. They're the ones who have the right nest type and uh, working toward having four uh, eggs on each of them. Okay, face up bird. In this case, he does have a single one worth five, so that's all he's going to mess with. Okay, lay one egg on each of your birds with that kind of nest. That's worthless to me too. Awesome. All right, my loon is coming out. So let's use now both the food I have, uh, one of the eggs... And his power is a nice one for me. It says, uh, when activated, the player with the fewest water birds draws one card. But the nice thing is you can always count yourself as the fewest when you're playing with the Automas, so even though I have two water birds and would probably be ahead of a regular opponent. Uh, I won't have to worry about that. All right, no pink powers. We do have a single uh, grain and invertebrate die, so we'll ditch that one, but that's all they do for this round. Uh, lots of fish and a rodent available. So hey, it makes sense to draw some more birds since I'm out. And again, none of these guys are blowing me away. I mean, I guess I could get the black red start. Uh, we are going to have a goal for birds in the field soon. He's there. He would have the right nest type with him being a wild. And I do like his round end ability, but gosh, getting three uh, food to feed him with? That's a tall order. None of those are even in the offer right now. See, I'm going to try my luck uh, drawing off the top of the deck first. So my first two just from the basic action. Oh, here we go. There's uh, two fish in the offer right now. Wingspan is right. Uh, right nest type, although I don't know if I'll have time to do it. Ooh, discard a fish to tuck two cards from the deck behind this bird. That'll help with that final goal. And then a little guy, uh, not doing too much, although four victory points is not too bad. This bird counts double toward the end of round goal if it qualifies, which it will not for any of them. So <laughs> thanks for nothing. But I like this guy, definitely. And moving on to the loon's power, I can consider myself the player with the least uh, water cards. So a double crested cormorant. Okay, good on wingspan, not the right number of eggs. I could tuck cards behind it. All right, so I'm giving myself options here. All right, AI. Oh, a bird of his type and another token. Darn it. So we're going to be started with one, so that's going to count as three, which I think is the most I could currently get with the birds I have. And nobody's five, six, or seven, so he'll just take a face down card. All right, so three actions left. I hate that all of these are water birds. I could get like the pelican down, I guess. Then I could just place eggs for a little while to try to clinch that uh, bonus token. So yeah, I need food, of course. Just gonna get the two uh, fish he wants while they are available. Let's hope the AI is nice again and discards the token. Okay, so he's gonna reroll all the dice first because there's only rats uh, before he looks for uh, some berries to discard. And there he goes, that's all he wanted. Okay, so last two actions, hmm. If I lay eggs, I'll be tied with the AI, but then if I play the Pelican, I'll have to lose one of them, so I might want to slow play on that. So for now, let's just take the lay action, which is just going to get me uh, two eggs. And we'll just sprint them out to all three of our guys. We're tied with the AI at the moment. Let's see how they react. Just face down bird, not messing with their total. So with us tied, I think I'll take my chances, leave my eggs, maybe get some more food. Got the pelican taken care of already, and there's a fish sitting over there. Maybe I'll get my uh, cormorant ready as well. That'll give me my fourth big wingspan burned, and maybe I can get two more at some point. So yeah, I'll grab a fish. I don't care much about the other one. I'd rather see this cycled, so I'll just get a grain. All right, let's see if the AI changes their standing at the last moment. Uh, one more token, they'll win. One less token, I win. 
Oh my gosh, that is uh, two rounds lucky in a row. They're gonna lose one token, but gain two eggs. All right, so they go down to one base plus one, two birds with those type of uh, nests and eggs. And I have one, I don't know why that was still there. One, two, three, if you count my wild. So a lovely swing of points there, awesome. I'm sorry, no end of round effects. We clear all the action cubes, refresh the offer. We had Eleonora's Falcon. I can get extra eggs, big enough wingspan, not too interesting otherwise. Black Woodpecker can get me a ton of uh, worms. That's nice, uh, said big enough wings. Really expensive though. And a Scaled Quail, ooh. Uh, has the right thing I want to get very cheap and can put a ton of eggs. I think that might be the one I want. All right, so this round's goal is birds in the field habitat. I only have one, but I might get that, uh, but I might get that scaled quail to get me another. Going to the AI's new card. They're gonna have a base of two birds there. This might be one I just have to lose, but at least I'll place for some points. And so the question is, do I grab more birds first or do I play one of my birds? I think I want to grab more. All right, so I'm gonna get a two birds and a third one from the loon's power. Let's definitely get this scaled quail. None of the others were too exciting, let's draw two more. All right, uh, none of them can have four eggs. That's clearly more rare than I realized. Yeah, that's a pretty weak ability. So yeah, these guys aren't great. I wish I had somebody that could eat them now. A new card in the offer, Northern Bob White. Tons of eggs, like that. Also lays eggs for free. Five victory points. Ooh, that's pretty tough, though. I mean, he's at least interesting if I get a chance to grab him. You know, in retrospect, maybe I should have grabbed the Falcon to deny the AI some points from their goal, but uh, didn't do it this time. I'm sorry, I should have mentioned remove the round two card from the Altama deck. Take away a token. I wish that had happened later. And three eggs. All right, and first for me, I want to get eggs faster. I'm going to put down the scaled quail. So that will cost one egg. Uh, let's take it from the loon for now. And it'll cost the uh, grain I got earlier. AI again. Um, oh, they're gonna reroll the dice before they take things away, but they want uh, berries and then fish. And they got the berry. You can definitely grab that fish. If I play those water birds, that'll give me bonuses. Yeah, so let's uh, grab food to get ready to play those guys and we'll uh, go egg laying. I'll get the only fish. And then I want to cycle this again, but grain looks like maybe more useful. Yeah, I just gets a face down card. Although just that has four victory points. So currently I'm still tied with the AI, but hmm, yeah, I don't really have much chance of actually playing another uh, field bird if I would need to. But let's get down our water birds we know we want. And yeah, the rough thing is I'm gonna have to get another fish to use both of these guys if I draw more cards with them to uh, get their tucking going on. All right, so we'll go ahead and play the white pelican first. Is gonna cost an egg, but we'll uh, try to produce them quickly at the end. And two of my fish. On AI does get a cube that puts him into the lead and two eggs. But we weren't thinking we would win this one anyway, so that's okay. Oh no, I can't play my next water bird yet. I need to get some more eggs first. I get three eggs and the quail lays one on himself automatically. So let's try to fill out my uh, four or more nest birds, even though I'm not gonna get too much from Breeding Manager. Another token. I was definitely not winning this. Ah, and he did get the falcon, discards the other bird that matched his goal. Let's see, no big birds coming out, so I'm probably not going to be too interested in them. All right, so my last action, I will play this guy with uh, two eggs and a fish and anything. And yeah, so I think pretty much my final round will be set. Try to get another fish and have uh, these guys do their little tucking thing. And then I think I'll just egg, 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 egg for a while. <laughs> but the automatas get in action. Another token, another face up. Oh, and there is a five. That's okay. So, wow, glad I didn't compete in that one. Let's see, the replacement card does have a wingspan, but I need two more of those to uh, get three more points. I don't think it's going to happen. But in any case, we can go to the end of the round. Uh, clearly, the automa got first place here, but I did have at least one, so I got second. We ditched the one automa card. Oh, and <laughs> I forgot I shouldn't pay attention to the owl. He's going away. Let's see. Great Egret. Uh, his power would not be useful at all. I only have one water space left, but his wingspan's nice. Acorn Woodpecker can hold four eggs. And you're not useful at all. And let's see. Birds with tucked cards. Two base. And if I work pretty hard, I can get up to three. So unless they get a double tokens, that'll uh, at least tie them. So you have five actions. I think I want to get fish, uh, get bird cards I probably won't even use just to uh, get 
four points from tucking cards there. And then maybe just three actions of getting eggs. I think I should be able to hold that many, and that's uh, as many victory points as I can probably get four with a single action. So let's uh, go for that. So food's coming first. I need to get lucky and get a fish. So I will ditch these since they're all the same. Okay, and there we go. I'll get the fish I needed. And nothing else much matters. Sure, let's get a rat. Ah, token. Three eggs, okay, but hopefully a uh, remove a token will come out. All right, as for me, gonna try to get some birds. So I get three cards, don't really need them. I already have way too many. And then a fourth, but the important thing is one, two. If I uh, pay a fish for each, I'll get two cards tucked from the top of the deck. So that's four victory points from the tucking, and then hopefully that'll be what wins me or at least ties me for the goal. The only face-up card I want is the one that would get the Automa seven points. But the other three I'll just draw from the deck. I mean, I can't imagine there's anybody that would be worth the trouble of playing them. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, good. And no cushy seven-point bird came out for the Automa to grab. Yes, remove a token. Love it. So uh, I'm definitely in the lead right now. But three more points for them. All right, and it's egg laying time. Number one. Remember, our quail is getting one each time for free. And besides that, we're really looking to fill out the few guys I have that can hold four eggs. Okay, AI. Remove a token, I would have rather had that later and a face down bird. Egg number two. So let's see. And I guess I'm only gonna get one more free one for him. So let's put a third one there. All right, Altama. Ah, the wrong order. If they had gone differently, they would have had no tokens there. So they're gonna have one more chance to beat me, which would be a huge swing. But hey, I got uh, the benefit of swinging at the uh, end of round one and two. So that would be fair, I guess. And one more laying eggs to finish up. Uh, these other three doesn't really matter because none of them can get to the four I need for my uh, breeding manager. Okay, so they didn't get another one, so we'll tie. I can deal with that. They do get a face-up bird, but I left him with only a five, so that's not too bad either. All right, so that's it. Let's uh, go to our score calculation, see how we did. Oh, wait, I guess I should say it's not quite it because, of course, we do have to do this one. And we tie with a three each. Them with a two base plus one token, me with three birds with tucked cards. But so here's my finished board and bonus cards. I don't think it's too impressive, so I'm not super optimistic here. The AI has some pretty nice face up cards, a lot of face down cards, a lot of eggs. Let's go to the paper and see how it all works out. All right, so for birds, I've got three, eight, 14, 22. Oh God, two zeros, 27. That was a pretty ugly. The Atama has seven face down, so that's already 28. Plus another 21 face up. And bonus cards, I had three birds with four more eggs. I had four birds with big wig spans. That's only six more points, not great. Okay, out of round goals. So let's see, I've got four, nine, 12, and then this is 11, split in half, rounded down. That's five more, 17. 17 versus one, three, nine, uh, 14. Tom has got 19, and I've got only 15. I think I'm seeing the writing on the wall. No food on cards, and six from tucked cards. 82 for the Altama, only 71 for me, which means even on easy with them getting three points per bird. Ugh. I will say that's a lower than average result for me, but that's also a higher than average result for the Altama. Certainly helped by uh, the new bonus cards, which again, give more consistency to their gains in my experience. But there you go, not saying I'm great at Wingspan, but that is a playthrough. Hope you enjoyed it, good gaming, and we'll see you at the next stop.